Okay, so we're going to run through a non-linear contact model setup, solve and post-processing using Apex. So we've got this hex mesh single lap shear joint. Um, so we've got in there the bolt and washer configuration, a couple of plates uh, to, to set this up. Okay, I've got constraints at one end and enforced displacement at the other. So we've got a series of mesh independent ties. So we'll show those in the model browser. Um, so we've got ties for the bolt, nut and washer configuration and ties between that bolted assembly and the, the plates themselves. Okay, so pretty straightforward but really easy to set up using the standard mesh independent tie definition in Apex. So we've got, as part of the um, interoperability utilities, a couple of utilities that we're going to use here. First, the first of all, the first one we're going to use is the edit contacts, and then we're going to use the export utilities. Okay, so under edit contacts, we'll open this up. What we're going to do here is um, specify whether we want glue or touching contact state for the nonlinear analysis. Obviously, glue will remain glued throughout. Touching allows the contact to open and close. Okay, so we want the bulk of the mesh independent ties to be touching contact. So we select them, the ones that we want to configure in the model browser. Okay, so we've got four ties for the bolt subassembly and then five ties for the larger uh, bolt to plate contact. Um, so set the contact type to touching and then just run with the, the standard input settings here, or the default settings, and then press apply. And then you'll see in the, in the model browser, each of those ties is now suffixed with underscore T, which means touching contact, okay? We can switch back if necessary. In fact, one of these ties, uh, the one between the the bolts and the nuts, which I think is this one. We actually want to force that to be glued contact, otherwise the, the, the nut would slide off the bolts during the analysis. So we're going to switch back to glue contact, highlight the tie, apply that, and then you can see in the browser that switch to, to glue contact. Okay. So in terms of the the nonlinear setup, that's all we need to do for the the um, the contact state. So just show the full assembly again. There we are. So once we're ready to, to um, submit the analysis, we go back into the interop utilities and click on export utilities. And then in here, we can specify um, what we want the exported bulk data file to, to, to do. So by default, uh, Natron Soul 400 run. We've got a scenario already set up. We've got a unit definition and then we just click export to. So we just give this a name. Just save that name. Load step control is its default. Contact settings are default. Uh, miscellaneous settings are default. We've got large displacements turned on here. So just click apply. And the deck is written out. Let's just double check that in the in the workspace. So we've got the example file and then we've also got the original example file. So the original file is the one that Apex would have written out by default for Sol 101, static, uh, linear static. Okay. Um, and then the example file is one which has the Nastron Sol 400 definition and the, the relevant nonlinear load case set up. Okay. Uh, one thing we need to do for the example deck is switch out the nonlinear stress option, switch that to just plain stress and remove any reference to nonlinearity. So currently Apex can't support nonlinear stress import. So we'll just save that deck, uh, come out of the deck and then we'll run the Nastran job. So just move to the working location and run that deck. Okay, so looking in the in the workspace, and so as the nonlinear solution is solving, we've got this 
SOL 400 status file, which we can look at. Um, so as it runs through, we can see the load incrementing. So by default, we're running 20% of the load as we run through. So we can see the, the, the separations and cycles for this. Uh, the job has exited with a, a, a zero code, which means it's terminated normally. So once we've done that, we can go back into Apex and we can go into studies and we can import the Natron results. Um, so we browse to the H5 file, again, just finding that location. There we are, example H5, import that result, just continue with the prompts. And then we can post process. Okay, so Apex will read in the output for each one of the uh, five increment values, if you like, or the, the outputs. Um, so if we if we run through to the the final um, case, the the 100% load completion, and then just look at the true scale deformation. Maybe animate that. Let's have a look, and we can see. That's our nonlinear output. Um, we've got gapping. Let me just show you the gapping. So we've got gapping between the two plates uh, where they've opened up and in contact where they're, they've been pushed together. We can look at the stress state. Um, so just say Vomises, for example. Uh, just look at one of these. Um, just bear with me. Just take the top plate. There we go. So we can see the, the contact stress definition uh, for that, that load application. Okay. So there we are. That's the, the nonlinear load, uh, nonlinear contact setup within Apex. I hope you found this interesting. If you'd like to develop your Apex usage, head over to our site where you'll find many online learning opportunities.